Hi, and welcome to Bytes and Bits. I'm Bob Grant, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about a very interesting website I came across. Recently, one of my subscribers asked a question um, about a BBC micro project. Um, he'd found a robotics book back from 1984, which had a BBC micro project in it, where we connected up the robot to the user port on the BBC micro. And his question was to do with the BBC emulator that I was using in one of my previous videos, and whether that could be used to actually interface with this robot. So um, long and short of it, uh, we did a bit of digging, and during uh, my investigation into the use of the printer port um, uh, as a user port, um, I came across this very interesting website. The site was part of the BBC archives, and it was about a project which launched in the 1980s in the UK, and this was the Computer Literacy Project. In sort of 1979-1980, computers were still this sort of mystical, magical machine that sort of lived in massive big buildings, uh, and really hadn't made its way into the general population. The idea of a home computer was really just starting to come out, and there were some computers which were um, sort of sold as, uh, as sort of business machines and home machines, but they had a sort of a 500 to 600 pound price range at, at least, and in those days, um, like that's equivalent to about two thousand pounds in today's money. So they weren't really the sort of uh, machine that you would get as a present. But then in uh, 1980, um, Sinclair Research um, under Clive Sinclair launched a computer called the ZX80, and that really broke the mould of this highly expensive machine uh, and really brought the price of a computer down. His, his target was to get a, a ready-made home computer for under £100, and that's exactly what he did. And that really changed the, the, the landscape for home computing when it suddenly became um, affordable for people to have an actual computer in their own house. Now, I was actually very fortunate in that my parents were able to buy me a computer. Um, this was in 1981, and I started not, not on the ZX80, but on the upgraded version of it, which was the ZX81. And we said upgraded. Um, at this point in time, that machine had 1K of RAM, so that, that's 1,000 bytes of RAM, so 1K, not 1 megabyte or even 1 gigabyte. And the processing speed was at 3 megahertz, so, so not the 3 gigahertz we have these days, just actually 3 megahertz. And you may think that that sounds like a, an incredibly primitive machine, but remember, at the time, in sort of 1981, that was actually a reasonably highly spec machine. Not top of the range, but not bottom of the range. It was, it was usable. And really, that's what I used then to learn to code with. So the launch of these cheaper home computers really coincided then with this idea of the computer literacy project. Um, UK government was worried that the UK businesses and population were starting to fall behind in the technology knowledge base. Businesses hadn't really picked up on this and were starting to become uncompetitive against other countries who really were jumping on this digital bandwagon. So it was decided that they would team up with the BBC to produce a range of television series and educational packs and so on, which would try and educate both the business population and the home population about this new computer revolution, which was actually taking place right at that very time. So these television programmes and educational programmes, and they even went as far as developing their own computer system, so this was the launch of the BBC Micro by Acorn Computers, and that was designed then to go along with the television programmes that they were producing, so that they could have a machine which matched in exactly with that system. And that's why I was so excited when I came across this website, because this is a true archive of all of the television series and software that was used in this computer literacy project. For me, that was really a nostalgic trip back in time, because um, I remember watching these programmes and being inspired by them, and that really much um, helped steer me down the career path towards computers and, and, and control systems design. My, my background is in control system design and sort of um, computers and machinery um, and design. 
But so if, if, if you are of a certain age and you remember these, then go back there and, and you can see exactly what was happening during your childhood. And it should bring back some very fond memories of all of the machines and software uh, and, and all these sort of things that were going on at the time. If, if you're a bit younger and you don't remember that time, then this truly is a, a historical archive, to be honest. Um, these things were actually happening at the time that these television programmes were being made. So having a look through, you can actually see the birth of the home computer and gaming systems and robotics and computers in industry. Um, Networking was just taking off at this time. I remember the first sort of joint uh, academic networks in the UK um, during the sort of early 90s, uh, and which of course then hooked up with the various sort of ARPANETs and so on in the, in the US uh, and produced this worldwide internet thing. And then of course then developed onto becoming this world wide web. So all of the, all of the information in these programs is really setting up the scene for the development of all of the technologies that we take granted for these days. Um, pretty much everything that you use from, from your, your smartphones uh, and computers and, and so on, it all started here with this sort of digital revolution. So, so do visit the website and again I'll put some links um, down in the description and on screen and have a go and, and have a look at some of these videos. Um, also then, do have a look at the software. That's one of the other good things that they've put online as well. Uh, the software that was used in the television programmes is all available there, and you can run it directly in your browser using one of the online BBC emulators. So there's a number of um, interesting ones in there. Um, I, I got into sort of graphics and games programming at the time, um, was developing some stuff on, on BBCs and eventually I, I had something called an Enterprise 64, um, which I think I was the only person in the country who actually had one of those, so that was a bit of a mistake. A very good computer though. But all of the software on there, say, the, one of the ones that sticks out in my mind is I do f actually remember watching a program where they were animating a three-dimensional house um, on a BBC Micro and that was written in BBC Basic and that program is actually on the archive and you can go and have a look at that. It's um, you, you probably will not be impressed when you compare it with today's graphics but at the time that was pretty amazing to see that happening uh, and actually get 3D rendering um, of, of solid objects. Um, and as I say it was written in Basic so, so you can actually load up the program the, the, the frame rate is, is abysmal, um, it truly is. Um, you're getting off a very, very simple um, house with a chimney. You're getting a frame rate, it's, it's about one frame every three or four seconds. But as I say, it's all been programmed. You can actually, if, if you run the program through the emulator, and then if you press the escape key, you can actually get into the BBC and you can actually list out the uh, program itself and see how that was actually done um, and how they manipulated the 3D um, space to produce that. Uh, and they're using a sort of background overdrawing algorithm there to, so they're not really doing hidden line removal, they're basically drawing the back bits first and as you draw the front bits of the object then that of course overwrites what was there before which gives you that sort of, um, in, in effect gives you the hidden line removal simply by drawing over the top of them. But there are lots of other things in there. The same episode um, showed a, a, a development piece of um, uh, film, really, which was developed completely using um, CGI, computer generated graphics. Uh, and again, at the time, that was cutting edge technology. Uh, and you can see there the embryonic form of the computer graphics that we see today, um, all the way up to our, our, through, through our Jurassic Parks, all the way up through to our, our current um, avatars and, and um, our Marvel um, films and so on, where it's very hard to tell which is real and which is computer generated. But all of that then, as I say, it took place at the time that this project was running. The television programs document that. You can see exactly what was happening and what was cutting edge technology. Uh, so I say either take a look and remember them and have a nostalgic trip back 
or take a look and see exactly where all of your current technology really came from and when it was born. So have a look, have some fun, and I will see you soon in some more videos. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.